on your oh darling we are twinning for god's sake <laughs> i mean i didn't even speak to you earlier and we are like we didn't mia this is superb it's so my superb. darling how are you i'm very well can i ask what is behind you because it looks like sort of old covers of magazine boxes or posters or something it does it's funny something i love doing is um and sticking things on the walls with glue tuck. And so they're okay. all the different logos from our podcasts. So we have about 35 oh, podcasts. Got and it. so That's... I've decorated, since we've been doing ISO and I've set up my home office properly, I've sort of stuck a whole bunch of things on walls everywhere. I've got my, I've been meaning oh, to fill that in and I've got, you know, pictures and then of course I've got the sequence. Oh, and I've got a small child. Come to bring oh, me glass lovely. water. Thanks, and Coco. Say, you've got Iris Apple. How much do I do. I do. I have How Iris. How much do we love Iris? She's fantastic, Iris. She really yeah. is. I mean, this is She's a woman phenomenal. who knows how to layer it on, Mia. And I think that's how we're going to age, Trini, don't you think? You and I? That's you what we're going to look like. I'm just already looking for the alternative glasses identification moment. Probably all yeah. the sequin. But you know what I love about Iris? I mean, she must now be 94 or 5. Yeah. And did you know of her existence before I read the magazine? I love you. Yes, I've always, oh, I've always seen, you know, like in magazines, she was always kind of iconic. Um, so I always knew about her. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I just, I see so many women, including my own mum, kind of lose their mojo and think that they can't have fun with their clothes anymore once yeah. they hit a certain age. Yeah. And I just think that's bollocks. I know, it's very, I mean, she does inspire, but because she's such a phenomenal dresser and she's so truly, the thing as well about Iris, which we forget, is she has that best Jewish woman's figure, which is oh, yeah. endless legs, not much waist, but endless legs, strong features on her face, which when you're older is what you really seriously need. And, yes. and very tall and skinny. But I know a few of my, uh, of my Jewish friends who have that thing of that incredible leg and slightly short-waisted. So the way think, she dresses, And sometimes can go a bit apple when you get older. Can go a bit apple when you get older. Yeah. But for her, with all that marabou and all that sort of faux furry stuff that she wears, it doesn't matter because it's hidden. But she has, it's her, you know what it is? It's that amazing ankle. Whenever she's in the flat shoe and she's in the leg, you see this skinny, beautiful ankle. And I always notice first what I don't have. Like I've, I've always had, you know, like I'm dressed now. This is my dress today, okay? You can tell. Well, you can't really tell because that's yeah. not thing, Anthony. But I'm just going to show you because I, I was just doing a how to wear sequence in the summer. This is a Massimo Duty jacket. You can just tell I am sl somewhat short-legged. I have long body. You can't tell a here. The thing about it is that if I wear this, if I wear this trouser too short, I'm very aware of the cankalization at the back of my leg. It might seem so little, but we all have our thing. So yeah. Iris Apple would never have that. She'd like have that really elegant end, end ankle moment. See, I always do a cropped ankle as well. I've got my, you can't really see, I've got my camo pants on. Yeah, but and why, I'm breaking my say rules. That. I'm not wearing shoes today. I've been very strict about shoes and a bra during ISO. Um, but today like I don't know what happened. That you shouldn't wear it. No, that I must wear it. If I don't have shoes and a bra on, I just yeah. don't have my head together. You know. Okay. Yeah. And so I've been getting quite dressed up for ISO. Not usually this dressed up, although some days. Yeah. Um, we call it ISO in Australia. Isolation. Do you call it that? No. I call it staying safely at home. Yes, you do. You don't like calling it lockdown. So we call it ISO and we call yeah. Corona the Rona. The Rona. The it's Rona. Corona the Rona. You don't want to get the Rona so the you stay in ISO. Only the Australia, Australians get away with, you know, Corona the Rona. Because it's like... You know what's funny? I, I um, went for a drive today and yeah. I've never in my life seen Bondi Beach without one person on it. Not, not a single solitary person on the beach or in the water on a beautiful autumn day. But I, th I heard they were back swimming. We've got in the English press that they're back swimming in Australia. Yes. They, well, it's this weird weather. So it's been unseasonably warm. Okay. And um, 
they Because you're going into your winter of... for those of you who don't visit Australia. Yes, exactly. Well, exactly. It does get a little bit colder than this, but everyone's been very grumpy because they, in, in the first week of the Rona, uh, yeah. ev they said social distancing, please. And then you probably saw all those photos of everybody down at Bondi. Yeah. Beach, like very crowded. And so then they went, okay, this is why we can't have nice things. We're closing all the beaches. Um, and then they had to say, but you can still exercise on the beaches. So now they have police down there. They've opened the beaches recently to exercise, but yeah. you can, can't stay for long. Like you can't sit on the sand. You just have to like go exercise and go. Yeah. Yeah. And then now they're saying, but not Bondi yet, but Bondi's opening on Tuesday and you're going to be allowed to surf, but not sunbank. Okay. Because Which my is brother is on Bronte. And he went yeah. first swim as a family like this, you know. Yeah, exactly. So we don't yeah. we don't like having our beaches closed. A lot of people have got very cross about that. I can understand because that's your lifeline. Whilst we're here, darling, I'm just doing a tiny bit of stuff I keep bloody well forgetting to do. And then we're gonna take questions from the floor, Esme. Um, Esme? Yeah. Ex excellent, darling, I'm gonna call you back. Sorry, I, ca I realized I can't take pictures unless Esme's off the phone. So what I want to do, darling, is I want you to talk through your skincare routine and what you're doing. Yeah. I'm doing a little, I wanted a better word, a blog for Glamour's YouTube channel. So yes. I'm just pretending this is another part of the day because I didn't do enough on the day I was meant to do it. So I'm just gonna add us into that day, <laughs> okay? So if you haven't had a shower yet, will you do all of this and then go and have a shower and take it off and start again? No, I won't have a shower because I had a shower last night. So I feel- Oh my God, you English people, you're so funny with your showers. I have two showers a day. Darling, I could so have two showers a day, but I just, I haven't got time after this to go and have a shower. Okay, got all right. On. Later, now today, I am with fantastic Mia Friedman in Australia, who is the um, editor and uh, founder of Mama Mia. She was the youngest um, editor of Cosmo at 24, and she is a doyen of just the industry. And one of my favorite people when I go and visit in Australia, so it's lovely to do a podcast. We're doing Getting Ready. Mia's just going on and getting ready. We haven't even discussed any products, but we're just doing no. it. So um, I'm just gonna carry on before she gets way ahead of me. Um, I've changed again. I'm in Massimo Duty, sequin jacket with a white cos shirt and a Me and M uh, trouser. Catch up later. This is so fucking tedious to do. Anyway, I'm sorry. You've no, had to do like, a lot of them. When, when things get distracted from the main event. So you've done, you've done, um, you know what I've done first, which I'm loving, excuse me, can I share something I'm loving? I'm loving yeah. this Medic 8. It's What's a, that? It's, you know what it is? Although something pelled just now, but I think I had two things on before I came upstairs. I don't think this was the peller. Oh, I know what the peller You mean was. when it gets like little bits on your face? Yeah, which I, which I yeah. absolutely hate. But I think what yeah. happened was I put something oily on top of something water-based and then I put something um, water-based on again. Is that why it happens? I've never known why yeah. that happens. You always need to put, you always need to put um, uh, water-based, water-based and then oil-based on top. That's my technique. So I think what I did is I did a really good oil-based cleanser, but I didn't take it all off. And no. then I put on um, this. No, I put on a spray, which I've just got from somebody, but it must have had oil in it. Then I put on this peptide serum. It's peptides and copper. I quite love copper, Mia. That sounds copper. very fancy. What, copper is something that I don't, I'm not copper using yet. Do I need it? Like, What's it going to do? The I got introduced to copper was one product from Neod, part of the ordinary company, and it was copper amino isolate. And copper, the only way I can best describe it, it acts as a channel for other products to become more active. That's the only way I can describe it. So what they've done here is they've got copper in one yeah. channel and they've got um, peptides in another. So what they're doing is they're giving a better activation for peptides, which are re the rebuilding army of, well, mm. you know, we've got a ton of peptides now in skin, but imagine it's a sort of rebuilding army to go in and, and it's like that. It, I mean, I might try this really badly, but imagine that somebody's preparing a path for you in a war zone, and then the army are going in. The copper is preparing the path, the army are the peptides. And I can feel like a bit of a war zone in your face when you get to our age. I feel <laughs> like I didn't sleep last night, Mia, and there was some, like a cat opera going on outside my house. There were these cats oh. opera, and I couldn't figure out, it was it the cat opera, or was it my, 
partner who um, was snoring really, really loudly, who I don't want to say, stop snoring, because I don't like doing it. And I did it with my ex-husband and I'd end up kicking him in his sleep and he'd wake up and say, why have I got these bruises on my legs? I also think Charles suffered enough in the last few days, don't we? I mean, can we just, that's the other reason I couldn't say anything. It was just Mia. I mean, I, I can't bear it, but it did, I think, even get to Australia then. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I saw it in the Daily Mail, and uh, not that I would ever look at the Daily Mail because it's important, yeah. but um, yes, I really yeah. sympathise because it's like, I'm like you. I have to make a whole lot of content at home. My husband, even though he's the CEO of, of Mamma Mia and we co-founded the company together, he is very private. Yeah. And he does not ever want to be on any films, in any backgrounds, mortified. Anything. Yeah. And it can be hard for our families because we've chosen to be public like this, but they necessarily haven't. And so it can feel, I don't know, I always worry about them feeling unsafe in, in their environment. So it's, I've sympathised and I just thought, oh man. Because you know what, it is Charles's house. And although I moved in five years ago, it's my home. But I'm very aware it's not the home I built with Charles. It's a home I moved into. So yeah. um, I keep, like, upstairs here, Mia, I keep my space. And I do everything here. Lila's <coughs> next door. The kitchen is where we all meet to eat. In between that is where Charles and I live. So Charles plays table tennis. And when he's playing table tennis, I go and do my skincare Q&A. But he came in early, and I was doing it, and he... On Saturday morning is very used to me doing a film because I do Saturday morning yeah. on on YouTube, on Instagram and he plays this incredible music for me. Oh yes, and I love that. Says, the playlist. He's I got Charles. great taste in music. But he has, yeah, fantastic taste in music. So he does that and my phone is on portrait. So occasionally he comes in and brushes his teeth and I never go like this. But yeah. for, for Wednesday's Q&A, it's on landscape and on oh. landscape, it's like a fish at time. So he goes to the loo and I'm, I'm just putting the mask on and I don't know that he's already naked on the loo. And then I catch sight, I think of him and I just do this with my phone. So we take it down straight away, but I must have a few journalists who watch my feed. So it then got yeah, in the they pixelate, Yeah, they pixelated his bottom though. So that was nice. I haven't looked at the detail. So I haven't seen Charles this morning yet and I think he's gonna know. <laughs> and yesterday I said to him, you know, I just, I, I need to let you know that we took it down but I didn't say anything about press because I didn't know there'd be any press. Charles, being very seasoned, probably expected there might be a bit yeah. of press. Okay, so I, I just thought there, but for the grace of God, go I. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, and I think look, you know what? It's happening to everybody because it's not just those of us living our lives like this. Everybody's on Zoom calls <laughs> at the moment. Everyone's so everybody's on everyone's on Zoom calls. So yeah. everybody's partners are wandering. Their children are wandering past with no pants. I mean, it's it's yeah. life, isn't it? This is just what life is. What eye are you putting on? This is where I need your help. So this is, I put on wisdom. Yeah, you're just going ahead. This is meant to be a makeup lesson that I was giving you and you're just like doing your normal makeup. Oh, well, cause I'm just, I don't know what to do. So I put on wisdom, which I'm completely obsessed with. Yeah. Um, and now I'm just sort of doing, you know, you get stuck in a rut. So now I've just grabbed faith. Can and you I'm go, just can you go of... to fortune instead? Yes, I can. Can you do that? So cause I I've say fucking this bought everything. All right, oh so I'm going to I'm gonna do wisdom first, and I'm just putting wisdom on as a base. It's a great base wisdom because it's very buildable. So I'm just okay, putting... look at all the products I've got. And Fortune, oh, God, look yeah. at that. Fortune is the only one I don't have. Okay, you don't have Fortune. All right, darling. So if you've done so faith what else? like What's that. What's close to Fortune? What's close to Fortune? Well, desire in a washout, maybe. Yeah, desire. But, but what I would do first, Mia, in, instead of you're going, dare I say, heavy-handed with, yes. um, with desire, keep with wisdom. Okay. And I want you to build up wisdom under your eye and create the lightest oh. smoky eyeliner. Oh. Because it yeah. does build. So you're just going to look up and you're going to just put some in. Like that. And go, All go the way underneath just the eyelash line. Okay, I need to smudge up there too. Around and back the eyelash line. Just so you get a okay. little bit of definition, okay? That's I didn't think perfect. of using wisdom to do that. I thought it was too light. Well, the thing is, it builds up beautifully. It does. And it just gives you that sort of slightly less strong. Oh, I really like that. Okay, but, like that. 
Just a little bit. Because I get such dark circles under my eyes. I know, darling. And we're going to, I'm going to help you with that because you've got some things there I'm going to show you with. You know what we can How then you... do? Do you have yeah, Swala? No. Yeah, uh, no. Golden I've got glow, Genster. The bronzer, the bronzer. No, I've got Genster and I've got Sunlight. Where's okay. Sunlight? Okay. All right. So I'm just going to hold on. I'm going to call Esme because I want to add this to the list because I'm going to just see what you've got to get. So have I you, thought so I had done, everything. So when you've done the under eye like this and you've done yeah. the above eye, it's going to be too big. So I want you to smudge it in with that little tea kit brush. Yeah. Like that. Okay. Just smudge yeah. it in. So it doesn't matter. It's going downhill. Okay. There. All right. Like that. Now you say you've got faith. Have you got queen? Yes. Okay. Let's just go to a little bit of Queen. I think that could be interesting. Great. But we're going to build up Queen gently. Gently. All right. So tiny bit of Queen. Just I'm on scared. the inner corner of your eye. Don't want you to go out. So you're going to go in here. Just there. Okay. And only up to the bird's eye. Just that much. Up to the what? Bird's eye. Up to the middle the crest oh, of the bird. From the inside to the bird's from eye. From the inside up to the middle. Uh -huh. Don't don't go further. Oh, that's great. Okay. I never knew this. Okay. All right. Like that. Yeah. And then I want you to get, we haven't cleaned it all up yet. Okay. And then I want you to get the face that you liked. You like face, don't you? Do you have faith? Well, I don't know. I, yeah, I like desire. Awesome. I just reach for it because it feels safe. Darling, do you have desire though, or only faith? No, I don't have desire. I thought okay, I had so more. We'll... I feel like maybe there's mum that I'm missing. No, we can take faith. We can take faith. Yeah. Take faith and make a little eyeliner, which you were doing here at the top. Faith. Yeah. There. With the pointy one. I swear to God, I had to do so much travel. So after we met and we, you had a cry and I, we just fell in love. Yeah. I got on uh, and did match to me mm -hmm. and ordered pretty much everything. And you I've did. gone back and back and ordered more and more. I ordered a bunch more at Christmas. And I had to travel a lot last year. And honestly, yeah. all saved me. And while I was doing a lot of stage shows, we do our podcast live. Yeah. And to be able to just have the pots in my travel kit was just a dream. Fantastic, darling. And also the tea kit instead of bloody five brushes, which I hate traveling with. I know. So I want you to take faith on your finger. Now, yeah. this, is a Ray Mor this is a Ray Morris brush you've got to get. It's this curved. It's like, I don't know what it's called, darling. That's the size of my thumb. Yeah. But it's slightly curved. Yeah, it's tapered. So why it's yeah. so good, because Ray was telling me this last week, and you must have done stuff yeah. with Ray, but... Just, I, I then close it. my eye and I push it up into my overhanging, aging, haggard eye just to oh. lift it up. And it just right. lifts my eye. So I push that in there. And you can do that with our darker bronzer as well. We're going to clean this up and blend it in a minute, but we're just putting what, on What did you paint. do that with faith? You did that with I, faith? I did it with faith. But what I did, darling, is I put some faith on and then I really rubbed it out on my hand. So I'm not putting too Got much it. on. And Got then it. I'm pressing up. I'll try to do that with my finger and pretend it's Ray's brush. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, it should be able to do with your finger. But the whole thing when you're with your finger is you feel you're pushing it up yeah. around your brow bone. Don't worry. You don't have droopy eyelids, though. My eyelids are drooping so much that they're soon going to be resting on my eyelashes. Okay. If you were looking straight ahead, whenever I yeah. do makeup, I yeah. you see I put the camera up. Yeah. I know I my stupid tripod keeps flopping down. Yeah. Okay. But if I put the camera up, it helps me to oh, feel okay. better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just putting it like that angle, it really helps yeah. me doing my makeup. So what I'm going to do now, darling, do you have any um, BFFI? Oh, God, yes. Which, okay, do you, which, color, which color do you have? I've you got have Mary purple? and I've got Redder. Okay, I want you to use Mary... Look. Mary, Great. I've gone oh to the pan. That's how much I love it. I, I need you to write down that I do this little combination. My eye, normal yeah. eye, under eye, is probably redder. But when I'm pale in the, in the winter, like now, I go to yeah. Mary. 
All right. So, when so I, what do you do with your fingers? I just wipe mine in my hair. Oh, that's perfect. Wipe yours in your Can hair. I do that? And it helps also cover the grays. Look, multitasking. I've go. never heard it before, and I want to be doing Wait. it every day. I want to there be doing it every day. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, you are just marvelous. So, I'm going to take now, I've got Mary yeah. here too. Okay. Yeah. But what I do is I do Mary for under my eye. And I do yes. Izzy for the edges. Now, Izzy is paler and it's too pale for you. So you need to do the equivalent of redder here. Oh, redder there. you're going to do Mary here. Oh. So the way you're going to do it, you need to look at me. Please look at me first, Carla. So you take in your little middle fingers and yes. then you just do your little under eye like that. Okay. Yeah. So do your little under eye, tapping it in. There. And then get the lighter shade in your finger. Oh, I think I might have used too much. And I've got Izzy. So get the light shade, get Mary. This is the key yeah. thing that's gonna help us, okay. And then look at how much this is going down here and it's a little bit too, yes. you know, it's just, it's just, it's dragging my eye down there. Yeah, oh, wet. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I want to lift my eye up. So I'm gonna get, so get the- um, That was red up. Mary, so yes, yes, yes. I've got Mary, which is lighter. Fantastic. Okay, get those. And I'm doing this up here. Oh, have I got too much? No, 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 no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you. One second. So you're gonna start just like you press it at an angle, the angle you want to get rid of the under eye, and then you just go up like this, and it's like you oh. created a really good oh. lifted eye, like that. Another finger now. Okay, so it just gets rid of all, especially in that little creasy bit where we're not young enough to do the smoky eye look. We no. need to clean it up. There. And then any bit that suddenly got carried away further up the eye, you can get rid of. But it just, oh, it's that my, really works, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. I did that first, probably, with Ray Morris in October. Uh, when yeah, she, I saw you that. You know, and I've just done it every si ever since. Esme, are you there? I'm here. Great. Okay. If there's any questions, if there's somebody who keeps asking questions we're not answering before we go on to blusher, or should we do mascara first? Oh, I didn't even bring my mascara. Okay. I'm going to do a mascara. I'm going to show you one I'm trying on one eye and another one on another eye. And you tell me which is best. Yeah. Will you do that? Yeah. Okay. Coco, so. could you bring me my mascara? I love that. Hey, can you bring me my mascara? What's the point of children if they don't fetch things for you? So bloody true. Oh, so, yes. Bunny, can you get me a mascara? I also call my daughter Bunny. It's very funny. Oh, I love that. Okay. Yeah. This is Honest Company. So there's like a pre thing and a post thing. Yeah. So I'm going to do that here. So you put this what, kind a of. pre thing? Like, is that not. Is that like. So what is it? Like a primer for your lashes? It's a primer for your lashes. I think it's all a bit of bullshit, but it says lash primer. So I put that How on. How are you finding with your, with your real lashes? Thank you, my, oh, thank well, you, my darling. Well, you know, I, I'll tell you what I've been doing a lot of, is I do five and three pills at night. I do Superior Hair from Victoria Health, two pills a night. I do Revitalash, yeah. which sometimes makes my under eye blue. And I do castor oil. I slather on my your eyelashes. What slather for? my eyelashes, my eyebrows, and my nails in castor oil at night. Really? I just think they need hydration. Now I'm using mascara. You're not wrong. I need hydration. So I'm going to just... I've got this Zooey Organic. It's an Australian brand. Zooey Organic. Okay, great. I'm happy to see what it's like. I've been really liking it. I've also been trying this um, Rimmel Wonderlux volume, but I have trouble with volume because I don't have eyelash extensions. I find that the volume ones can get a bit clumpy. Anything that says the word volume in it. Yeah. I mean, because I've got no eyelash extensions left, I, my eyes are, my eyelashes are growing okay. But I've got another one here. How are you feeling about is... not being able to have any um, Botox and stuff? No. Uh, I think I just had it done like a week before I went in. So it should last for three months, four months. I, I mean, I have Botox probably actually every five months. Oh, so you've got plenty of time. So I've got plenty of time. Now the other little you, trick. 
is to go lower into lashes the, or not oh my god look yeah at your lower lashes. lashes that's amazing but to go into these tiny little bits right in here with the end of your lash and you'll find there's some extra lashes you can pick up just going in here and sometimes i get the eye sometimes i get it in my eyebrow okay so i mean in my eyeball eye. yeah i do it takes a bit of time doing that bit and do you still curl your lashes i used to madly curl my lashes in the 90s but i can't be bothered anymore so can't be bothered i picked up lashes lila's eyelash curler the other day yeah so i just thought nah i know nah. <laughs> i'm just saying it's too nah. hard just can't be fucked but i do put can't be fucked. on my brows you what i want to talk about you i want to talk to you about brows in a minute oh yes Oh, I'm going to talk to you about brows. I'm just looking at your brows, Mia. We're going to do a brow moment. I can't wait. Okay, let me see okay. your brow. Okay, look at me. I've also just given up going to anywhere. So I dye them with the at-home dye. Yeah. Can you, I think in the middle, you've got a bit of brown bit. Maybe. Is there a bit of brown bit there? Oh, no, I think it's a pimple. Oh, it's a pimple. Okay, fine. Sorry. I think so it's darling. a pimple or some scarring or something. Okay, yeah. darling. So when I look at you, yeah. one, one thing that I want to be able to do is yeah. to not make my brows follow around my eye because it would give my eye more of an overhang, okay? So yep. there's a little technique, and I just wonder if you've got, you've got faith or desire. Have uh, you got emperor? Faith, I've got faith. Do you have emperor? Please, Yes, name. I've got emperor, yes. Okay, pick up emperor. Have we got any burning desire questions, darling, Esme? Um, no, I was just loving it at okay. the same time. All right. So this is really dark, but I want you to do this one. Yeah, so I got it. P picking up Emperor, which is a very yeah. neutral dark brown, I want you to pick it up in your tea kit angled brush. Get it? Got it, yeah. Okay. And put stuff on it. Put, put stuff in it. Yeah. Then I want you to pat it on your hands so you don't go mad. Yeah. And then what I want you to do is change the shape of your brows because oh, your natural do thing of doing your brow is to go up and the down. And I want you to try and make your brows straighter, which means you're Ooh. going to put a bit more above here, above that bit. And you're going to put a bit more underneath here. It's like when you're straightening out a line. Ah, like that. Are they too Classical. bushy? I just have abandoned No, my I love a big too. brown. I love a big brown. Yeah, and don't go down again. I want you to try and go straight out. So your tendency is to follow yeah. it down. So even though it wants to go down, ah, let, let it have a tail I know what you're saying. that maybe goes a bit straighter out. Oh, that's not where my eyebrow is. Even if you're adding a bit on to your brow from... God, it's hard to do it on a phone, isn't it? It's really I know it is. Yeah, I know it is. I know, but we're just, you know, like I've got, I'm leaving, I'm leaving a trail with the phone, but we want to give a general feeling of this. We do. So it's about going up at the top and tr just all the time thinking, how can I make them straighter and not going down? Straighter and not going straighter down. Straighter and not going down. And the other thing, Mia, coming close, because you were a compulsive plucker in the 80s. So this brown, oh, I think, is too, it could go in a little bit. So you could mm. just take a little bit in. You could just go in a tiny bit. Just to the bottom? Well, just go in a bit. Because like the distance between the bridge of your nose and where too your brow starts is a little bit far. But instead of going down, go across uh, a bit. Across. Across, okay. Don't go down. Yeah. Okay, just okay, fill so it in now across. Move up to this part. Yeah, but go in a tiny bit more across. Just like straight in, like going straight. Oh. Okay. That's a good colour to use for brows, actually, especially now that my hair is this ridiculous dark colour. I mean, well, it's not a it, ridiculous colour, but it's Well, dark it just is, it's, you know, you're not lightening it, so it is the colour. And then I'm using a little... I'm using Talika eyelash conditioning gel just to kind of train them back. Now, the other thing, Mia, I want to do with you. Are you ready? I'm going to get you to get. I'm ready. Because yeah. the inside of, because you have 
a fabulous nose, you have more opportunity to feel your dark circle is in here more than yes. down here. So that's where you oh. feel dark. So I want oh you God, to take redder. Virtue. I want you to take yep. redder with yes. starlight. Redder and starlight. And I want you to mix them together. I don't have starlight. I thought I had everything, Trini. This is okay, very, very distressing. Do you have virtue? Do you have virtue? I do, but I don't have it in front of me. I definitely have virtue because what I've been doing with virtue is putting it in here. Exactly. All right. Yeah. So do you have sun? I think, yeah, it's I do. Coco, I yep, think it's I've too, got a stack it's somewhere dark. around. Too dark. Have I got a stack of Trini products somewhere around? I think they might have been in the kitchen for some unknown reason. Well, we always like them in the kitchen. Maybe. So if we get to find them. Just in here, right? You just put something light yeah. in Yeah. The idea is to get your kind of eye shade. And I do this with a fuzzy brush because my finger's too big. And you can mix it with, you could mix it with Virtue or Starlight, all right? I can't do Don't it with my fuzzy brush. Tone. You okay. want that I'm going to do it with my fingers. Inner radiance. And then I just go in there like that. I, I point a bit in yeah. there and then I point a bit in there just to lift that internal dark eye. Because a lot of people's under eye when they said they have dark circles is that. And then you give it some reflection yeah. and it really helps. Got it. Got it. I wonder if I needed a bit more Amelia. I mean, I've got my Amelia just a touch. I wonder if I should be using a bit, if I should have used a bit more of that. Well, you can use a little bit more if you want to. Play with your Amelia. Next, we're going to do, some, we're going to go on to blush with sunlight. You've got sunlight, darling, haven't you? I do. Coco, have you found that stack? No, I can find it. Oh. Really? That's so annoying. So you have... Oh, I know where it is. There's a bag in my dressing room. It's in there, darling. Uh, How... It's a, like a, a paper bag, a carry bag. How old is Coco? 14 and a half. Oh, it's Coco, Coco. Coco, Coco. Yes. Darling. She's going off to get you stuff. That's great. That's... Oh, oh she's being so helpful. Is she? All my friends with tween and teen daughters. Ah, oh, you found it. You're a dream. Here you are, are the missing colours. Coco, come and say hi. <laughs> come and Coco, say hi. Come and say hi. Coco, don't wait. Hi. How are you, darling? Good How are you, you, darling? Are you off school, Good Coco? Morning. Pardon? Are you off school? Yeah, we're going back next week, so and, I'm not looking and forward tell to me, that. But is are you the girl who went fucking a yay? I have no school, or are you the girl who went oh my god, my grades? Kind of both, but mostly the first one. <laughs> I know you're a secret studier, and I respect you for that. <laughs> We've okay. been in ISO for so long. Thank you, my darling. <laughs> All my friends with um with tween and teen girls have been giving their mums shit about drinking wine. So I spoke to one of my friends and she was having a fight with her, her daughter and her daughter said, why don't you go downstairs and drink wine? That's what you're best at. Okay. Okay. I get that oh. one. All right, Dad, what, what blusher do you have? Okay, I found virtue. I've got virtue. I've got sunlight. We're all we're all happy okay. now. So let's so let start me put with... a bit of virtue in there. And then I want you to mix. What should... do you have, Sasha? Today? No, you don't. Okay. So Esme, will you remember Sasha? Um. Okay. Do you have Schmuggy? Yes. Brilliant. Okay. So it's like a to... treasure hunt. I feel so clever when you ask it and <laughs> I can find it. It's like bingo. It's like Trini bingo. Okay, so we're gonna use Schmuggy in a slightly different way, I hope, for you. So what I want you to do is start off with Schmuggy, like this, yeah. and just dab it on your lip. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then I want you to take Schmuggy with a little yeah. bit of sunlight. <gasps> This is exciting. I've never done this before. Oh, okay. So take sunlight. Yes. And take schmuggy. Yes. And make sure you've got a mushy, shimmery thing. And then Where's get it going to go, Trini? Fingers. Where's it going to go? Get, oh, get both your fingers. Do that. Both fingers, both fingers, both fingers. Oh, I just dabbed one and then the other one. Okay. okay. That's fine. That's fine. Like that. And then we're just going to start blushing, but high blushing. Yeah, we'll go like this. 
slightly high 90s blushing. We're going to have that shimmer. Slightly. Yeah, around in circles. So we're adding some shimmer to the blush. Oh, I love it. And then this we're going to take so sunlight fresh. on its own. Yes. Sunlight on its own. And we're just I use gonna a lot go, of sunlight. I like it very much. We're going to go over the top. I'm just going to put a bit up here. Yeah. Quickly. Go for it. Are we going to go over the top with, with sunlight? Yeah, just over the top, but over the top of the, uh, of the arch of the cheekbone. The top. Yeah. There. And then, do you have Maddie? Or do you have, no. what do you have as a lip glow? Uh, gosh, I've got Talus. I've got um, lots of sheer shimmers. I've What's got your, which sheer shimmer? Which sheer shimmer oh, have you I've got? I've got Cordy. Cordy and Lila. You? Yes, you could do actually. Look at me, which one? Let me see. I would do a bit of Lila. I would do a bit of Lila with that. And I will just do yeah. the same because otherwise Lila would be so upset that I wouldn't do Lila. Because I want to see how yeah. it looks together. I would generally do Maddie, but I'm going to do Lila. What color is Maddie? Maddie is like a really soft pink. But I think there's something nice about the life of Lila. But there's Maddie and there's Lila together. Got it. Okay, so, it, so um, Lila's a little bit, uh, sorry, Maddie's a little bit like Dido, but Dido's got the shimmer. Exactly, yeah, and Dido's a bit brighter. Maddie's a kind of very nice, neutral, pale, pinky um, uh, blush. And then I'm gonna oh, take like the very last very bit, take the very last bit of your blusher and put mm. it on the bit of your cheek and take, take the very, very last bit and just put it on the ball of your eye. I love the taste and the smell of Lila. I know. It's a good one. It's sort of watermelony. Delicious, yeah, it's watermelony. Yeah. yeah. And then we didn't do contour. Do you have contour there? No, I'm intimidated by contour. I can't. Okay, well you know I'm gonna show you something, Mia. What? And this is for later, and I'm just gonna show you what to do. So I'm gonna um Esme, I want to get to Mia some Kate and Swala. Esme, I've got okay. Genster, but I don't know what to do with it's it. It's the wrong colour for you. You should be Swala. Um, so this is, Kate is our contour, which is scary. Oh, yes, yes. I, I never knew how to use that. Okay. Uh, do you have Kate? No, no. Okay. And then Swala is our bronzer. So Swala yes. is a bronzer does this. So if I want to look a little bit of tan, I rub that in and I just get a really natural, oh. lovely tan like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But when I do contour now, I take a little bit of Swala and a little bit of Kate, and then I mix it in my finger together, okay? And I want this just to be like shadow, and then I start at my outer hairline. Yeah. And I've got rid of most of the products in there. And then I in go up here, and I don't go down here, so I go up literally to where my cheekbone's about to go over. And then yep. at the end, I go slightly up. So I'm doing like a J. Oh, like up here. Like a J, just oh. like that, okay? Yeah, yeah. And then what it does is, and then at the very end, this is another bloody trick that, that, um, that Madam uh, Ray taught me, is I take my Trinchon or something, and then in case I've gone too far down here, I just, you go underneath so that I make sure wherever I've decided to put, contour it's just in the area of the contour okay so is would that be my just a touch in amelia yeah it would be your santa? amelia you just do amelia like that is santa lighter or darker than amelia it's darker so santa's mm -hmm. your summer foundation amelia okay. your um was so, or santa is your yes summer a summer foundation and amelia is your winter foundation okay and then yes. i'm gonna ah. finish do you have yeah. miracle blur I do. Okay, so how I finish with Miracle Blur is I go to where I have a few scars and I fill them in. And when I'm scars and shininess. Can I use it on my 11s? Because I yep. don't have... You can go up to your 11s. Up. I usually tap it in, push it in, Mia. Uh, really push it, it in. 
and then just tap it and blend it out and then you can rub it. But that way it will fill in the 11. Yes. So like my I 11. have a scar here. So if I've I- I've got chicken pox scars on my forehead yeah. too. So if I tap it in first like that. Yeah. And then I blend out. Oh, that's not a scar, that's a pimple. No, here for me. No, I know, but I'm just uh, thought, I thought maybe I had a scar, but it's oh, not. Oh, okay, a it's a pimple. Yeah. And then around my nose where I've got larger pores, I'll put it. Do you have face finish with you? Yes. So the difference really between face finish and, and Miracle Blur is for face finish, it's, it's like absorbing the oil. So I sometimes do this with face finish. I take a bit of my finger. Ooh. Yes. Then I put it on my hand and then nice. I put my finger and I rub it over the product. So I've got a decent amount. And then I just tap where What's I What's the difference it. between doing that and just having a mush around the pot? I get more product on my finger. Oh. And, you know, then I will really tone down any shine. Oh, and face finish was done trick. to tone down shine. And so if I want to like around my nose, I maybe yes. don't want shine, you know, here. But I like, love that shine, but I might just go in here with the face finish and tone down the shine and then on my chin. Do you think shine is nice on the cheeks? I think shine is divine on the cheeks because I think it makes you think, mm. when I look at women with shine on the cheeks, I think, oh my God, what's your skincare routine? It looks amazing. Yeah, that's what I think too. Yeah, but and you're, yes. you know, right now with that combination of the, of the highlighter mixed with your blusher, your skin has really yeah. woken up, Mia. And it, it does look like you're wearing a lot of makeup. Stoked. Stoked, darling. Stoked. Esme, we need to, we've just been having a natter like nobody else is there. So are, will you just throw us some questions, darling, with your young memory that can remember questions from 10 minutes ago? Um, yeah, um, some people, well, I think you've answered most of them. It was kind of about oily skin and how not to look shiny. Yep. Um, tricks of putting blusher, so you answered that. Yep. Um, you've, you've literally answered all the questions. Well, isn't that convenient, Mia? Can we talk, Mia? <laughs> because this is the week, Mia, where I'm talking about, I start this on Monday and I haven't done much since, but tomorrow just about women who might be in the middle of um, COVID and they are thinking, do I want the career when I come out that I have right now? Do I want to change my yeah. career? Do I want to change my lifestyle? Do I want to go back to that boss? Do I want to be an entrepreneur? Okay. So I'd love your words of wisdom on this in terms of, you know, we could, I could give an example of three different, three different people. I could say to you, the one I think is most challenged right now is the girl who's left um, senior school or uni? So the girl who's left senior school who doesn't want to go to uni and the girl who's left uni who hasn't maybe had the opportunities normally set up, although I think schools have been good, to give work placements. Um, so, you know, how to go about getting a job. If you, if you want to go within our field, I'm not going to say if you want to be a doctor, Mia, because you and I aren't in the positions to talk about that. But what, no. if somebody, you know, if you, how do you hire people on what basis and how do they get to be able to sit in front of you for a job? I tell you, it's funny. There's someone who uh, we hired recently as an editorial assistant and uh, we don't usually take interns at Mamma Mia, but somehow I think she just called up and said, I'll do anything. And we needed to pack a whole lot of gift bags for our live shows. Yeah. And her name's Emma. And <clears throat> I, you know what it's like when you're in the office and there's a lot of people in and out and there was just something about her she introduced herself to me and and she was packing gift bags and i just knew i just knew that she was going to stick around and then over the next few months every time i looked up she'd be there like she'd just be doing something or filling in for someone or and sure enough when when an editorial assistant position became available we offered her the job and yeah. she just told me recently, this was about a few months ago, she just told me yesterday that um, she had uh, Mamma Mia on her vision board from when she was in high school about where she wanted to work. And I was very much the same with magazines. I worked for a magazine called Cleo and it was always my dream to be there too. And I just showed up. I just waited, you know, I, I did work experience and I kept coming back and back. And I think, do you know what I don't care about? 
I don't care about where you went to school. I don't care about what you got in your leaving exams. And I don't care if you've got a degree or not. I don't care about any of those things. I, there's never been a better time to be discovered than now. Because once upon a time, it was all about who you knew and how you could get in front of someone. How on earth could you get the notice of an editor or someone that you wanted to work for? Now, particularly in, in our area, which is content, you can create social content or create content that can get you noticed more easily than ever before. And in terms of the women who are coming out of, you know, or looking around after Corona and going, well, what do I want to do? I think that what we find is that the number one reason that women start their own businesses, and I know this is true for me and maybe it was true for you as well, Trini, is that we want control of our own destiny and of our own hours. And it's not that we don't want to work hard, but we want to be in charge of our own time. And all the surveys show that even more than money, women having that flexibility, particularly yeah. after they become mothers, means that, um, you know, they don't have to do that walk of shame anymore. I used to always do that walk of shame when I worked um, in a TV station and I would have to, like, I was breastfeeding my daughter and I would have to leave before all the male executives. And I'd pretend that I was on a phone call and I'd, I'd leave my my bag in my car at lunchtime and I'd sneak to the lift pretending I was on my way to a meeting and then I'd duck into my car and I'd drive away and of course I'd be online for three or three more hours that night after my daughter had gone to sleep but that idea of the walk of shame that you have to do often as a mother that's a really big motivating factor and I think a lot of people have seen the flexibility that they've enjoyed working from home I mean there's got to be some bright sides to this right um, and that might be a really big impetus for people to consider a career yeah. change, not to mention the fact that lots of industries just have been decimated and people will have to find new careers. Exactly. I think what you said about control is very true. I was talking about this a couple of days ago and it's, it's control of how you work, but it's also control of the outcome because when yeah. you're at the behest of a boss, it's always that final decision. You might have a creative idea you really thought would had, had some weight and somebody else squashed it or, you know, we can be in that position too, where somebody who's working with us might think, I think it's fantastic. And we say, no, we don't think it is. That's the, yeah. that's the responsibility and the benefit of being the boss um, and working out which ones will fly and which ones won't. And not being too um, pricking of people's passion of their own project. So I think there's a real burden of responsibility. So you move from being in control, but then what that brings is the, the future of some destinies of some people's careers. And also um, being able to control the culture that you create yeah. as a boss. I mean, that's yeah. been one of the things I know I've found most wonderful and, and I'm sure you would say the same. Um, you know, being able to decide things like at Mamma Mia, for example, we don't support the paparazzi economy in any way. So we could make more money and get more traffic if we publish paparazzi photos, but we're a purpose driven media company and, and our purpose is to make the world a better place for women and girls. So. We choose, unlike all our competitors, to not publish any photos of celebrities that aren't taken with their permission because I know that you would know more than anyone how yeah. the paparazzi makes people's lives miserable. And it's incredibly yeah. intrusive, particularly for women. Yeah, I think I, t I agree with that. Yeah, so it's lovely as a boss to be able to um, establish that kind of culture. Yeah. Now, what would you say to a woman whose kids have left home and she's thinking, I want to work again, and I don't know how on earth to start. I don't know if I want to work myself. I don't know. You know, ageism yes. is a toughie. And I did a whole thing on Trinity London before Christmas of just doing a day in the life of Trinity London. We had quite a few people at the end saying, I'm in my late 40s, early 50s. Can I come and apply for a job for you? All right. And this, to me, is the hardest thing, because when you are that age, You've mm. got to have the timelessness and agelessness about you to work in a business like ours. We have to both be that. We have to understand the, the zeitgeist of the moment, but also understand inside the head of a 20-year-old as we understand inside the head of a 50 or 60 or 70-year-old woman. And yeah. I, for me, I sometimes look and I think, you know, I look around my team, Maya, and they all are much younger than me. Um, we have the head of customer services, Cheryl, who's in my decade, and my COO just joined my decade. But, um, <laughs> you know, we market to a lot of women of my age. So I'm the only one with Cheryl probably <clears throat> who's responsible to understand what goes on inside their head 
and my social media team is much younger. So my biggest education for them is to, you know, really make sure you're speaking to everyone because we're an ageist brand, but I want to speak to your mums and your aunts and get a sense of what they want. Really understand because what you want, if we did everything of how a social media executive feels and thinks, we wouldn't have a business because it would just be, yeah. we would turn into milk or glossier and we're not milk or glossier. So I don't think, you think that's why it's so important to have, I mean, diversity and inclusion in all its forms is really important to yeah. have different voices within your business. Yeah. Um, not just because it's the right thing to do, but because it's also smart business. It's yeah. also smart business to have different generations. And it's yeah. really, really important. And, and yeah. we're the same. We have, because we're a digital media company, we've got mostly young people, mostly millennials and Gen Zs. Yeah. But it's really crucial, you know, the head of content and me, uh, we're both in our late 40s and yeah. um, we're both 48 actually and we're the oldest in the company apart from my yeah. husband and yeah. um, someone else but it's really important to have that balance because we we do our live shows you know for our podcasts and we have three generations of women coming the grandmothers the mothers and the daughters uh, yeah we're like that and yeah. unless you are uh, want to be really really niche and that you know if you want to do that that's great but mom and me is like trini london in that we are for boomers millennials and gen z yeah. You need people within your organization to represent that in the same way that you need people of different sexualities, different socioeconomic backgrounds, different nationalities, all of those things. Yeah, exactly. It is. Because that's is what something... your customers are, you know? That's yeah. Pretty, and I, and I, uh, yeah. I like, I, I just am aware, Mia, when we come out of this, it's like, I will be looking for how can we include more women who, but also they're women, you know, because we're entrepreneurs and serial entrepreneurs, You've got to have a lot of energy as a woman, because I am eight years older than you, to work as hard as your millennial team. Your millennial team, their brains might wake up by only 11 o'clock, but they work late, they work hard. They all work bloody hard, all of them. Um, so it's interesting, and it's something I permanently am thinking about, Mia, because I do want to have more women of all different ages in my business. Um, and so, Trini, do you know the advice I'd give to older women who want to get back in the workforce or women who are just, you know, thinking they might in a few years? Stay yeah. across digital. Stay yeah. across social media. Media. So even for yeah. you and I, we've, we've got daughters who are on TikTok. It's not our platform, but it's really important that we understand TikTok and how it works and what it is. Yeah. And yeah. don't what it, ever what go, I never be. want to be what the person... Yeah, I never want to be the person who goes, oh, TikTok, I don't understand that. Or oh, Snapchat, I don't understand that. Yeah. So I always try these things, even if I decide the platform's not for me and it's not for our business, like Snapchat, yeah. which is designed to be very inhospitable to old people. Um, yeah. You still need to have that curiosity and that ability to go fast because every business is a digital business. In 2020, whether you're an, oh. you know, an aged care provider or, or selling lipstick or, or media, whatever you are, yeah. there's a social media component and a digital component to every business now. Yeah. And a lot of those social media components, depending on what business they are, will need to know how to get two women in their 40s and 50s who are on social media. So the more that you know and what you do and the tools you use and how you use it, yeah. the more helpful you will be to that kind of company. So I think that is really solid advice, Mia. That's great. Yeah. Darling, I think we're going to have to stop soon because we'll have two minutes before before um, Instagram will actually cut us off, which is oh. great. But I want to say it's as ever such a joy. Um, I know, sorry, I'm multitasking. I know it sounds weird. I'm focusing on you entirely, but I have, if no, I don't I'm tidy as I go, I'm like, I'm fucked. So I apologize if I was doing this a bit, but you know I'm yeah. chatting for you and my head is with you. Um, so I love talking to you, I really hope that, you know, this has started a conversation, maybe monthly, we can just have a, a life chat, you Love know, it. from one pond to another um, yeah. about what's going on. Without a shadow of a doubt. And I'm such a fan, you know, I think it's important to say that I've bought every single one of these products. I know. <clears throat> That's how much I believe in what you're doing. And I'm such Love a big it. fan and uh, go you. Thank you so much, darling. Have Love. a wonderful night. I love you. You Bye. too, darling. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.